Hi everyone, today we're going to do a quick tutorial on uh, calibrating the, uh, the lens for a gyro flow. You will need to open the, the chart, uh, the calibration chart, which is located inside gyro flow. Make sure that your lens is uh, at, at, at least f2.8 or f4 to make sure that it's pretty sharp. And I would suggest a faster sharper. So I use 1 to 200. Um, this will avoid uh, any uh, uh, unnecessary rolling shutter and will eliminate uh, the blur. Uh, calibration is pretty easy. I mean, you can watch the tutorial um, uh, provided by Gyroflow on their website. I will post a link in the description. But what I usually do just take your time and uh, without allowing a, uh, a lot of rolling shutter just uh, move your camera to make sure that uh, the chart is in uh, is in focus and is visible fully visible inside the fray so in this case we're shooting uh, we're making a profile for manual lens uh, which is TTR design 710 millimeter f1.4 yeah, as I said, just take your time. Don't rush uh, because unnecessary jitters uh, will create uh, less uh, sharp uh, image, and uh, this is not the best, uh, not the optimal condition for the later calibration inside gyro flow. Just follow the pattern. Just uh, make sure uh, you do the same. Roughly takes one 1.2 mi minute, uh, I guess, uh, uh, no longer than that. Uh, once uh, once you're done, you will need to export it, uh, the MLV file. We will jump into it right after that. Uh, but just a quick note: I personally prefer rendering it in ProRes 422HQ, but you can choose something else depending on your system, depending on your machine uh, capabilities. Uh, inside MOV app, it is highly recommended by me <laughs> because I did many calibrations in the past uh, because I usually uh, use uh, manual focus lenses and I do it handheld. Um, I would suggest you do the uh, dark frame su subtraction uh you a uh, little bit increase it depending on the environment you uh, you had been filming in uh, but um, I suggest you make sure that the sharpness the clarity the dark levels the the light levels are uh, a little bit exaggerated because I mean you will not be using this particular video anywhere else that other than calibration and I would strongly recommend do the uh, chromatic aberration desaturation uh, to the highest level on the threshold and the, the radius um, 2 to 10 is fine this will eliminate any uh, unnecessary CAs uh, that are created by uh, manual uh, lenses uh, not being in focus on the chart and um, as I said, sharpening will help a lot uh, to to create a, uh, a perfect profile. So, what else? Um, I guess um, you exported it in uh, Rec 709, so just the standard Rec 709. In Gyroflow, uh, it's pretty straightforward. You go to calibrate Calibrator, choose that, select that video, and uh, click Auto Calibration. That's it. Uh, if your footage is good enough, uh, I think there are three states. Uh, one state is green, which is good. Uh, orange. Uh, it's a bearable uh, calibration profile and red which is no go 
so hopefully this time it's gonna be green oh I know it's gonna be green because I'm recording this audio on top of this is a voiceover right um, but um, why we want to create this calibration profile in the first place right uh, it's not just uh, to correct the lens it's also to uh, I don't know how it works maybe gyroflow people can uh, give their comments on, on how it's done but I saw many calibrations I did some of them were in green uh, and they were not perfect and some of them were in orange and they're spot on I don't know how it works but um, for example this mode in particular this is a 4.6 uh, 14 bit 2.2 um, by 1 aspect ratio uh, 1 by 3 crop mode uh, mode uh, it creates a lot of rolling shatter well, there's a, the readout I, I got is around 33 to 35 milliseconds which is a lot for any camera in the lens but I mean this is magic lantern right um, so the correct calibration uh, allows us to uh, correctly eliminate that rolling shutter and small jitters and uh, um, I don't and something else to make sure that the, the the final footage is stable and looks you know fluid I would say um, yeah so when you're when you're done when gyroflow flow is done uh, calibrating that footage uh, you will get green orange or red uh, calibration uh, I think it's called uh, rejection rate something like that so see here it's green and just put your uh, lens uh, camera uh, modal uh, data inside this these brackets because once you're done you will either upload it to the server automatically if you choose so uh, I usually do that if the profile is good um, but and you will save it on your disk so which is very important uh, because later you will use it here I'm showing the rolling shutter I never choose to put manual rolling shutter because uh, later in calibration in stabilization uh, process you will uh, uh, you will be able to fine-tune it um, to your own liking I would say and I just like to to uh, keep it open and uh, do it manually I mean, kind of a discipline I would say um, so here yeah and gyroflow flow process is in many videos I did just open the file open the gyro data do the gyro bias uh, correction I mean it's all written on uh, gyro flow documentation I mean this entire process and uh, uh, even the calibration uh, pr uh, camera lens uh, calibration process is uh, shown there in the video in the doku so I'm just you know doing this for for, for those who uh, who are on my channel and by the way thank you thank you for we are right now more than 900 faithful subscribers thank you I mean I've been doing this for, 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 for many years but I see the uptick in subscribers uh, in the past couple of months I guess the, the content is uh, useful so thank you uh, if you if you if you need more um, ideas or tutorials just let me know in the comments and uh, I'll gladly do the do a uh, record it and uh, edit it for you uh, and on this note I guess um, yeah so this is a calibration process I will leave you to that with some nice music in the background and uh, in the end uh, 
of this video of the caliber of the stabilization video you will find the final result and the comparison between non-stabilized and stabilized version of this particular video this video was filmed i mean i basically i chose this uh lens and lens profile because i, I didn't have it one quick quick note for those who are still here um sometimes you can use uh a different uh profile and it may or may not work perfectly uh but i mean since i have a huge collection of profiles on most of my lenses uh and most of them are manual lenses um sometimes uh it's just the the footage uh needs uh, something different so sometimes even a mismatching uh resolution mismatching uh aspect ratios from different lenses like for example i, I filmed something on 35 mil and then i'm using a for example i filmed something on 35 mil uhd 4k and i cannot stabilize it with the same profile i don't know why maybe the profile was 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 not that that, that good but then uh, for example for that i use pentacle which is 29 mil uh in a resolution which is much higher or even smaller and and it works so the good and the bad thing about calibration uh, and creating your own lens profiles first I mean you're in control and you can redo it anytime you want right yeah I mean you can create as many profiles as you want for the same resolution same lens uh, different modes and so on uh, the other thing is that it actually allows you to uh, play with many profiles applying them to uh, mismatching resolutions and mismatching modes and lenses but and i hope this was useful and uh, see you on my channel and bye bye
Thank you.